So you're saying yes to Vaporian, Lopunny, and Gardevoir, but no to Ditto? Yeah, I'm not a sick freak like you, Joe. I know you guys were probably talking about some uh, sus shit again, so I uh, don't want to know. Just Pokemon stuff. Oh, um, in that case, let's talk about which generation had the best starters. Who uh, wants to go first? Me, me. Gen 1, of course. Oh, here we go again. Geriatric Joe and his raging hard-on for Gen 1. It's probably because at this point, it's the only generation you can even remember. Fuck you, Donald. It's not just because it was the first generation. Each of the designs for the Pokemon are iconic to this day. The only one that's iconic is Charizard, and that's just because he's a dragon. Nobody cares about Venusaur or Blastoise. If anyone else hears you say that, there's no chance you're getting reelected, Donald. All of them are loved. The stat distribution for them made them relatively balanced and even showed different growth curves. Charmander was strong late, Bulbasaur was strong early, and Squirtle was a nice middle ground. Doesn't matter when nobody chooses anything other than Charmander. At least it's a better than your beloved Gen 2 starters. They literally just uh, copied the stats from Gen 1 to Gen 2, basically. And the designs for Gen 2 were way worse in both how they looked and their typing. Hold it right there, Barry. Just because I like Gen 2 doesn't mean I think it had the best starters. Totodile and Cyndaquil looked cool. But monotyping and bad stat distribution meant that they're pretty dog shit compared to some other gens. The only intellectual statement you've ever made. Still better than Gen 1, Sleepy Joe. As I was saying, the best starters were from Gen 4. They each had the same stats for balance, as well as incredible designs and move pools. On top of that, the dual typing served as a decent balancing point between them. You say that, but, uh... Empoleon versus Torterra was even worse because of the typing. Plus, Infernape was a repeat typing from Gen 3. Speaking of Gen 3, uh, that's definitely the best generation. Normie bullshit. I'm not taking any shit from the, uh, Scaly. Just because I think Mega Charizard is cute doesn't mean I'm a Scaly. I meant cool. Okay, you know what? Just to prove I'm not a Gen 1-er, I'm going to say the best starters were from Gen 6. The type advantage pattern they did was novel, and all the final forms are extremely interesting and fit the evolutions. Okay, so instead of a scaly, you're a furry now? Hold up, Delphox is a baddie, though. Maybe you'll get a kiss if you win the archery tournament, Donald. You're the only person on the planet who understands that reference, Sleepy Joe. You did too, Donnie boy. I didn't get to finish. The Gen 3 starters had the best designs evolutionarily from start to finish. They also had fairly unique stat distributions, and, and, and each of them has a really strong fan base. Trico had less moves in its move pool than the number of functioning neurons in Sleepy Joe's brain. What? And the Gen 4 starters had more moves than the number of drone strikes you ordered, Barack. Which is a lot. It doesn't matter because Gen 3 laid the uh, foundation for interesting starter design. That's why it's still so beloved. If we're talking about the foundation, then it has to be Gen 1. I thought you were defending Gen 6. Or did you already forget? Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, George, we're arguing over which uh, generation of Pokemon had the best starters. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. I guess Gen 7? I just really like Primarina. She makes me feel pretty. That's uh, uh, nice, George. Yeah, good for you. Hello, friends. I see we are having a debate of some kind. May you inform me of the topic? Oh, Ben, we're talking about which Pokemon starter generation was the best. Oh, that is quite simple. According to the data I've collected, the best games had to have the best starters. Hence, Gen 5 was the best generation. Shut the fuck up, Ben. Get the hell out of here. Did someone kick him? 